Dear friends, uh, this is Tani Boozer from the University of Bern, and I have the pleasure to present to you a typical case report of our postdoc clinic. Therefore, this case report is more for the younger generation of colleagues being in education and implant dentistry. It's a typical case for oral rehabilitation with an interdisciplinary approach, including the surgical department and the prosthetic department. The patient is a 56-year-old healthy non-smoking male and uh, he has several main complaints. That includes lots of old, non-satisfactory fillings and restorations, a distal extension situation in the left mandible and a single tooth gap in the right maxilla. This intraoral picture showed the defective and anesthetic restorations, a cross bite on the right side and an over eruption of the upper left posterior teeth. In addition, you see the missing second premolar, first molar in the left mandible and the missing second premolar in the right maxilla. The panoramic radiograph gives a nice overview about the clinical situation of this patient. Uh, it shows that the patient has no periodontal risk factors since the vertical bone levels at the remaining teeth in pretty good condition. We have in the left mandible a sufficient bone height uh, for the placement of implants, whereas in the right maxilla the vertical bone height is reduced due to the floor of the maxillary sinus. A comprehensive treatment plan is established, including first a hygienic phase to improve oral hygiene, uh, minor periodontal treatment and extraction of tooth number 27, followed by a surgical phase with implant placement in the left mandible and in the right maxilla. At the end, the prosthetic phase will follow up to replace all the defective restorations and to produce implant-supported crowns. For implant surgery, a three-dimensional cone beam CT was uh, taken to uh, see the detailed anatomic situation in the left mandible and in the right maxilla. F the first surgical placement was done in the left mandible with standard implant placement since the bony crest has been excellent allowing then implant placement without the bone grafting. You see the intraoral view following the placement of two stroman tissue level implants in area 35 and 36. This surgical placement allows a non-submerged healing uh, after application of 3 mm healing caps, reducing the need for a reopening procedure following uh, the healing. Uh, the anticipated wound healing phase in this case was six weeks and you see that we had an uneventful healing with ISQ values uh, higher than 70. In the right maxilla the anatomic situation is a little bit more uh, advanced because you see that the bone height available is roughly eight millimeters. Since we are dealing with a single two situation we uh, are using a sinus floor elevation to allow for a 10 millimeter uh, implant for single tooth uh, support. When the anatomy of the sinus floor is flat, as in the present case, a osteotome technique can be considered. The sinus floor elevation uh, with the osteotome technique using a transcrestal approach requires from my point of view a bone height of at least 6 mm and a flat anatomy of the sinus floor. This technique is less demanding than the window technique but it has a certain risk uh, for a perforation of the Schneiderian membrane. For that reason the surgeon must be able to switch to a lateral window technique in case of a membrane perforation. Here you see the surgical kit you need. You need an osteotome tip 
with depth markings and you need a mallet. The intraoral view of the single tooth gap shows a sufficiently spaced single tooth gap mesiodistally and a nice band of keratinized mucosa. The search is done with a minimal flap to expose the ridge. You see that an implant bed preparation was done first with a spiral drill to a sink depth of 7 mm, which was then confirmed with a periapical radiograph. Then the implant bed preparation continues, widening the diameter up to 4.2 mm. Here you see the osteotome, which is used then to fracture the floor of the sinus, uh, which is done with a mallet. The sound of the tapping uh, indicates when the bone is fractured. We take the normally a Valsalva test, a nose blow test, to confirm that the Schneider membrane is not perforated. Then the sinus for elevation is performed, utilizing a mixture in a 50 to 50 mode of autogenous bone chips harvested locally and DBBM, which is a bovine bone filler with a low substitution rate. The bone filler is shifted or moved up apically with a depth gauge with rounded edges to minimize the risk to perforate the Schneider membrane. Now, the sample gauge is inserted to a sink depth of about 11 millimeters. As next, the white body tissue level implant of Stroman is inserted without pre-tapping the threads to optimize primary stability. The micro rough SLA surface is positioned about 1.5 mm below the crest, uh, leaving the implant shoulder in a supracrestal position. This hybrid designed implant is used for more than 30 years at the University of Bern and has shown excellent long term stability uh, in multiple uh, clinical studies. The ISQ value was 74 and 77, indicating a very good stability for the patient. Here you see the periapical radiograph obtained during surgery to control the sink depth and following surgery uh, to document the applied bone fillers with the osteotome technique. The surgery is completed with uh, the application of a 3 mm healing cap to allow for an transmucosal non-submerged healing. For financial reasons, a provisional restoration has not been applied. We are anticipating a healing period of 8 weeks uh, to go then directly for the final restoration with an implant-borne single crown. Here you see the progress of healing at four weeks of healing. The uh, uneventful soft tissue healing uh, is just normal. And the periapical radiograph indicates already a nice progression of bone formation in the periapical area. Summarizing the progress of this uh, treatment with dental implants, uh, we have the following take-home messages. The present case demonstrates the importance of a comprehensive treatment planning, including both a clinical and radiograph examination. In the right maxilla, an insufficient bone height is quite common and is a challenge for the clinicians. The use of a short implant in this case was not indicated, since non-splinted short implants of 6 mm lengths have shown in recent studies a clearly increased failure rate of roughly 10%, which is for my team not acceptable. In consequence, we have to use an implant place with simultaneous sinus floor elevation, which is a well-documented surgical technique for safety and predictability. The osteotome technique is one of the two options the surgeon has. It is only used when the bone height is 6 mm or more and when we have a flat anatomy of the sinus floor. The osteotome technique is an elegant technique since it offers a low morbidity 
uh, but it can only increase the bone height uh, by, uh, by about three to five millimeters. Based on more than 20 years of this application in our team, uh, this treatment option is safe. However, the, due to the anatomical limitations we often see, it is used in less than 10% of sinus floor elevation cases at University of Bern. In most cases, the prosthetic rehabilitation going straight to the final restoration is done after eight weeks of healing when the ISQ value is 70 plus. Here you see the team who did the surgery in the middle, Lira Rachman, who was uh, the surgeon, uh, supported by an international crowd of visitors and other uh, guest uh, postdocs in our department. Uh, for me, in my phase of career, it gives me great satisfaction uh, to work with uh, young colleagues of that age because they are very motivated, highly talented and uh, it is a pleasure to work with these young folks. If you should be interested in the surgical protocols utilized at the University of Bern for the rehabilitation of more than 500 partially and fully edentulous patients per year, then I can only appetize you to come uh, and, uh, to Bern and attend one of our master courses in the field of implant dentistry. Here we show uh, the treatment uh, of our patients with life surgeries, offer workshops and of course uh, lots of lectures provided by an excellent faculty with a lot of knowledge and experience. This is the homepage of our CE department. The name is the Center for Continuing Dental Education, CCDE, where you can find all the details of our master courses, not only in the field of implant dentistry, but also in the field of periodontology and reconstructive dentistry. With that, I thank you for your attention and hope to see you in the near future once uh, in Switzerland.